all Elite Dangerous Horizon players recently got access to a new version of the game called Elite Dangerous Horizon 4.0, where they got access to the new graphic engine that we got with Elite Dangerous Odyssey. However, if you were to upgrade your account to Elite Dangerous Odyssey, you would lose access to this version of the game. And if you want to play Elite Dangerous Horizon, you would be forced into Elite Dangerous 3.8. However, there's a workaround, and I'm going to show you how. Today's video is brought to you by Rich Wallet. Rich create modern compact wallets made from premium materials like titanium, carbon fiber, or aluminum. In fact, Rich is so confident in the product that they offer you a 45 day test drive with a full refund if you don't like it. But why would you like them? The wallets are easily half the size of a traditional wallet, but despite that, they can still hold up to 12 cards and has a money clip on the side. All the wallets also come with RFID blocking to prevent digital theft. So check out Rich Wallet on rich.com forward slash D2EA and use offer code D2EA to get 10% off. Okay, we're gonna start this from the beginning and I'm gonna show you some commands that you can add to your Elite Dangerous shortcut that's going to slightly change the behavior of the launcher. And this is all completely standard. We're gonna be looking into some extra tools here in a second. But for now, these are all things you can do with your normal Elite Dangerous installation. So what I have here is a shortcut for Elite Dangerous. If we jump into um, to look at the properties, we can see here I have Elite Dangerous installed through Steam and it's point down to the edlauncher.exe file. Now, you can add a number of extra flags to this, as I said, that change the way the game file behaves. For instance, if I put slash no VR, it forces the game to start up without any VR. So if you, for instance, sometimes play VR, sometimes you don't, you can add one that has no VR and we can add one that just has normal VR. There are other ones that are more useful. For instance, if I go in here and I go auto run like so, and I click apply, you can see in the launcher, I do not have any options to choose anything down here at the bottom. And that's because it will just automatically launch the launcher and go straight into the game, as you can see here, without me doing anything, don't have to sit and select anything, it just starts the game up. Now there's another little trick here. After you close the game, you will see that the launcher, it stays open, whoops. <laughs> and if you don't want to do that, you can go into your little shortcut here. And you can also at the end, you can add auto quit, like so. When you put auto quit in there, again, all these commands are going to be in the description. If you put auto quit in there, that means once you close the game, it will also close the launcher right after. But let's talk about Elite Dangerous Horizon. So now I have, obviously, I have Odyssey on, my, on this account, and I have Elite Dangerous Horizons here that I want to try and launch. And now you can see we are in Elite Dangerous Horizon as expected, but if we look down here in the corner, we will see that we are in Elite Dangerous um, version 3.8 and that's not what we want. We want to see if we can get into 4.0. Now for this we're gonna need something called the mini ED launcher. Now this project was originally created to get around the long boot times for Elite, basically skipping the launcher and going straight into launching the, uh, the game file. This project has been around for a very long time, a lot of people have been using it for years. However, we are going to be downloading pre-compiled exe files off the internet and run, which is usually very bad standards in terms of security. And to make matters worse, these are unsigned, so, we, well, yeah. Even though the project here is open source, as you can see here, there is nothing technically preventing people from uploading a different exe file than what is actually shown here as the source code. So just keep that in mind that do this at your own risk. Um, all I can say is that plenty of people have been, been using this in the past without issue, but I just wanna give that disclaimer because I can't verify it and I can't absolutely ensure that it's working. I've been running it, I have not had any issues. The mini ED launcher, not only does it allow you to snork scheme faster, but it also allows you to get some extra flags. For instance, you can see down here, it lists some of the, the flags we already looked at, auto run, auto run, so there, and auto quit there, and we have the VR, they don't list the no VR flag, but that exists as well. But also we get access to EDO for Dangerous Odyssey, EDH4 for Elite Dangerous Horizons 4. So what we're gonna do is on this page, we're gonna click up here. It was basically guides as you can see here, if you install through Steam, if you install through Epix, if you install through Linux even, if you have a dedicated uh, separate install, there's guides for each of them in here, do read them. We're gonna go in and get the, uh, the latest version. And then for me, I'll get the Windows 10 version that we can see right here. You can also download the source files if you are interested in that compiling it yourself. Extract the zip file, and in here you will see a number of files. Um, 
the one you'll need in my case, because I'm running it through Steam, I'm only going to need the, um, the ED or the mini ED launcher. If you're running it through um, Epic, you're going to need the uh, the bootstrapper as well. But again, read the guide because it explained this in, in detail. And what you're going to do is you're going to basically copy that exe file into your Elite Dangerous install folder, as you can see I have done here. Next up, once you've got that, we are going to uh, right click this and we're going to uh, create a shortcut for it. The first time you run this, it will just open the window and close again. Because we haven't really set this up. But I do recommend you still just run it once, just to get it. And again, you win, your computer might shout at, shout at you the first time you run it. So, uh, so yeah, keep that in mind. So in order to get this to work, we need to do a little bit of setup first. So what you do is you're going to jump in here to the properties of this. And we're going to basically make an, an, a, an account, or basically store our account information somehow. Because, of course, we are omitting the launcher. That means that... We're going to need to store it someplace else. What we're going to do is we're going to go forward slash frontier and then we're going to, in double quotation marks, give a account name. This can be anything really. Um, normally I would recommend you use the name of your commander, MP Astro, but because I've already used this when I was testing this, I'm going to make one just, just called, whoops, <laughs> just, just called demo, MP Astro demo, like that. Now when we launch this, you can see here that it's going to ask us for our email and then I need to type in my password check my email because it should have a verification code. We can see that we now have a number of options. We can choose to launch into basically Elite Dangerous Odyssey, Elite Dangerous Horizons, Normally Dangerous Elite Dangerous Arena. This is the exact same options as we have in the uh, as we have in the normal launcher. So if I just wanted Horizons for instance, I can press 2 and now it's going to launch Elite Dangerous Horizons. And there we go, we are on Horizons, but we can see we are still in 3.8. So this is no good. The window will stay open. We're going to fix all these things and make sure you don't have to type anything into the window here in a second. But first, before we do that, we need to enable Horizon 4.0. This is why we're here after all. In order to do that, we're going to head into the folder that's going to be local app data with percent signs around it. Backslash, I'll just go in there actually. And in here, you should be able to find the folder called Mini ED Launcher. And in the Mini ED Launcher folder, there is a settings JSON. Oops. Open the settings JSON with your favorite text editor, regardless of what that is. There we go. And here we can see there is an attribute. This is a, as you can get, a JSON file. Um, and there is an attribute here called Additional Products. You're going to have to basically copy and paste a piece of uh, a piece of information in there, a piece of code in there. There we go. Again. In the description, you can copy and paste it from there. Once you've done that, we can go ahead and save this file. And now, when we go ahead and run this, you will first notice it is remembering our credentials from before, so we don't have to log in now. And look at that. Look at option two, Elite Dangerous Horizons 4.0. How neat. Let's press two and let's try to launch it. And there we have it. We are in-game, as you can see. And as you can also see, we are in Elite Dangerous Horizons, and if we look down here in the corner, we are in fact in Elite Dangerous 4.0. I know it says Odyssey, but it actually also did, if you noticed it before, with the, with the normal Horizon. It's just the, the series that we're in right now. Now, there's a ton of small quality of life things I want to show you now, because this is a little bit annoying. You have to sit and type things into a command prompt, and it keeps it open afterwards. So after we have put our account in here, what we can do is we can use the same tag as before, auto run, like so. Now we also need to tell it which version of Elite we wanted to run. So remember we had to press all those numbers. So in this case we wanted to run Elite Dangerous Horizons 4. So that would be EDH4 for Elite Dangerous Horizons 4. And also I want to use auto quit so that it closes that command prompt after the game has exited. So we don't have to press that. Especially if I go and just fix a little typo in there. I made a small typo auto, auto run with a T, not with an R. There is one more thing though that I want to do before uh, before we do a final launch test of this. And that is this file here. It doesn't look very pretty, does it? That icon there. Um, so I've actually gone ahead and I've made a... Uh, there we go. <laughs> Lofted all my server and I thought the icon files are harmful for some reason. Um, I've made an icon file. Um, which is just basically an image file you can use for, for file icons with the Elite Dangerous logo. I uh, actually I used an, um, an old Elite Dangerous logo to make them stand out from the other one, so you can clearly see the difference. Um, these are easy to make in a editor program if you want to, but I'll, I'll post a link for one in the description as well. Go in here, go to Change Icons, and then you go to Browse, and in my case I have it right here on my desktop. Just a small image, image file here. Well, boom, open that. 
apply. That's about as convenient as it gets. And with that, regardless of whether you have Odyssey or not, you can now go and play with your friends who may have any other version of the game, and you can all play in the new graphic engine together. If you found this video helpful, please go down and like it, maybe even subscribe to the channel. Thanks a lot for watching, and until next time, I'll see you guys in space.